Each year, we directors believe God to develop a theme that is most appropriate for our worldwide ministry. And this year, our theme is live fearlessly with an exclamation mark. Make sure you get that in there. Let's go to our theme verse for the year. Let's turn in our Bibles to Joshua chapter 1. The book of Joshua chapter 1. This will set us up for a spectacular year ahead to help strengthen each of us, strengthen our fellowships, and move God's word around the world. Here in Joshua 1, we will begin our quest on how to live fearlessly in all that we do in our daily lives. Joshua chapter 1, verse 9. Have not I commanded thee, be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee whithersoever thou goest. As born again sons and daughters of our Father, the Most High God, we can live fearlessly we can live fearlessly in every category of our life. With bold believing, we need not be intimidated uh, or afraid of anything as we live God's word and we expect God's power to be manifested in our lives. The verse we just read was spoken to Joshua, but it has significant meaning, impact, and far-reaching implications for us today. Let's explore the context of this verse. So let's go to chapter 1, verse 1. Now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Let's pause here for a moment and consider what had just happened. God said, Moses, my servant, is dead. Moses was no ordinary man. There is a saying for someone like this who is exceedingly impressive like Moses was, and that is he was larger than life. Although born a Hebrew, he grew up in Pharaoh's royal household and was educated and trained in all of the wisdom of the Egyptians. Acts chapter 7 tells us that he was mighty in words and in deeds. And he was called by God to lead about two and a half million Israelites out of the oppressive bondage in Egypt. And through God's power, Moses parted the Red Sea and led the children of Israel to walk safely through it. Yet they were on dry ground, but the Egyptian army, this great Egyptian army pursuing them was destroyed. Moses led this massive number of Israelites through the wilderness as God went before them by day in a pillar of cloud, and by night he gave them light by a pillar of fire. As Moses led them, God provided manna from heaven for them to eat. And twice, Moses brought forth water gushing out of a rock for them to drink. He had a relationship with God like no other. The scriptures say that God spoke to him face to face as a man speaks to his friend. Moses alone received the revelation of the law, which was now the written standard for them to adhere to. During the 40 years in which Moses led the children of Israel, God's blessing remained upon them because Moses stood on their behalf. The word says there arose not a prophet since in Israel like unto Moses. And now... Moses is dead. Well, what a spiritual vacuum that this must have left. How would you have liked to have been in Joshua's shoes? 
Moses was gone. What a stunning shock that this must have been for the children of Israel and especially for Joshua. Let's continue reading in verse uh, two. Now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all this people, unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. How was it even possible for Joshua to lead God's people like Moses did? How could he possibly fill Moses' shoes? How could Joshua even come close to accomplishing what Moses did for God's people? No wonder in verse 9 he told him to, to be strong and be of a good courage and fear not, right? But when someone is relying on God for guidance, we know that God would never put anybody in a position that they could not handle. Let's go back and see how God prepared Joshua for this moment in history. Contrary to growing up an Egyptian prince like Moses, Joshua grew up an Egyptian slave. He was in bondage with the other children of Israel. He was first mentioned in Exodus 17. So we'll be back to the book of Joshua, but let's turn to Exodus chapter 17. Genesis, Exodus. And while you're turning there, let me give you some background of this record that we're going to read. The children of Israel had just left Egypt. They had gone through the Red Sea, and then there on the Sinai Peninsula, less than two months after they left Egypt, here comes the army of the Amalekites to fight the Israelites. So we're going to pick the record up in chapter 17, verse 8. Then came Amalek and fought with Israel in Rephidim. And Moses said unto who? Joshua. Joshua, choose us out men and go out, fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the rod of God in mine hand. So Joshua did as Moses had said to him and fought with Amalek. And Moses, Aaron, and Hur went up to the top of the hill. And it came to pass when Moses held up his hand that Israel prevailed. And when he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hands were weary, or King James says heavy, but weary, and they took a stone and put it under him. And he sat thereon. And Aaron and Hur stayed up his hands, the one on the one side and the other on the other side. And his hands were steady unto the going down of the sun. And Joshua discomfited Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. And the Lord said unto Moses, write this for memorial in a book and rehearse it in the ears of who? Joshua. Joshua, for I will utterly put out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. So our first encounter with Joshua is in a military battle. Now it doesn't say that Joshua had any fighting experience. But obviously, Moses saw something in Joshua to assign him to this daunting task. And of course, we can be pretty sure that God was involved with that choice too. And it wasn't Joshua's military genius that won the battle. It was the power of God in operation. Afterwards, God told Moses to write this for a memorial in a book this was a striking victory. So to impress, to continually impress this upon Joshua, it was to be written down so he would later be able to draw mental strength from the reminders of this great success story. Now turn to Exodus 24, and let's keep learning about Joshua. Here is the second record of Joshua in the Bible. Exodus 24 We'll start in verse 12. And the Lord said unto Moses, come up to me into the mount and be there. 
and I will give thee tables of stone and a law and commandments which I have written that thou mayest teach them. And Moses rose up and his minister, who? Joshua. Joshua. And Moses went up into the mount of God. And he said unto the elders, tear ye here for us, referring to himself and Joshua, until we come again unto you. So they are somewhere on the mountain slope. It implies that uh, Joshua stayed there as Moses went on up into Mount Sinai. And while Moses was on Mount Sinai, the glory of the Lord abode upon the mount and a cloud covered it for seven days. Then it says this in verse 17. And the sight of the glory of the Lord was like devouring fire on the top of the mount in the eyes of the children of Israel. Everyone saw this, including Joshua. And Joshua stayed at his post for 40 days and 40 nights until Moses came back down. Wow, what a faithful and patient and steadfast man that Joshua was. Let's turn to chapter 33 now, just a few chapters away, Exodus chapter 33. And here is another record of Joshua. Chapter 33, and we are going to start in verse 9. And it came to pass, as Moses entered into the tabernacle, the cloudy pillar descended and stood at the door of the tabernacle, and the Lord talked with Moses. And all the people saw the cloudy pillar stand at the tabernacle door, And all the people rose up and worshiped every man in his tent door. And here's what I mentioned earlier. And the Lord spake unto Moses face to face as a man speaketh unto his friend. And he turned again into the camp, but his servant, who? Joshua, Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man, departed not out of the tabernacle. Now, in verse 11, it says a young man, but this could be translated a servant. At the time of the Exodus, when they left Egypt, Moses was 80 years old. Now, the word does not indicate how old Joshua was, but Dr. E.W. Bollinger believed that Joshua was about 53 years of age when they left Egypt. Other sources say that he was between 40 and 45 years old. If these estimates were the case, he would not have been considered a young man. So the last part of verse 11 could read, but his personal attendant, Joshua, the son of Nun, a servant, departed not out of the tabernacle. Here, Joshua was part of one more breathtaking and magnificent moment. Let's turn now to Deuteronomy chapter 31. Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy chapter 31. Another well-known record of Joshua was when the children of Israel stood at the brink of the promised land. And 12 spies, one from each tribe, were sent into the land, the promised land, to spy it out. Two of the spies, Joshua and Caleb, came back with a good report and were ready to go into the promised land immediately and subdue it. The other 10 that came back, they brought back an evil report. (laughs) And because they weren't living fearlessly, They were afraid and they convinced the children of Israel that they could not take the promised land. So this caused the children of Israel to wander in the wilderness for 40 years, right? For 40 years. And at the end of those 40 years, we read this in Deuteronomy 31, verse 1. And Moses went and spake these words unto all Israel. And said unto them, I am an hundred and twenty years old this day. 
I can no more go out and come in. As the Lord hath said unto me, thou shalt not go over this Jordan. But the Lord thy God, he will go over before thee, and he will destroy these nations from before thee. And thou shalt possess them, and Joshua, he shall go over before thee, as the Lord hath said. Now we're gonna skip down to verse six, and he's still speaking to all of Israel, not just Joshua, but all of Israel. Verse six, be strong and of a good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he it is that doth go with thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. And Moses called unto who? Joshua. So now he is talking to Joshua and said unto him in the sight of all Israel, be strong and of a good courage for thou must go with this people unto the land which the Lord has sworn unto their fathers to give them and thou shalt cause them to inherit it. And the Lord, he it is that doth go before thee. He will be with thee, he will not fail thee, neither forsake thee. Fear not, neither be dismayed. And now let's go to verse 23. And he gave Joshua, the son of Nun, a charge and said, what? <laughs> be strong and have a good courage. <laughs> there it is again. Israel was told this once. Joshua was told it twice here, and we read earlier in verse 7. So now let's go to Deuteronomy 34, chapter 34, and let's read about the end of Moses' life. This is just three chapters away. And we're looking at records to see how God prepared Joshua. Deuteronomy 34, verse 7. And Moses was 120 years old when he died. His eye was not dim, nor his natural force abated. And the children of Israel wept for Moses in the plains of Moab 30 days. So the days of weeping and mourning for Moses were ended. And Joshua, the son of Nun, was full of the spirit of wisdom. For Moses had laid his hands upon him and the children of Israel hearkened unto him and did as the Lord commanded Moses. Now let's go back to Joshua 1, now that we have some more understanding of Joshua's life. After all of this, we will be able to better understand chapter 1. So let's start in verse 1. Now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan. God said, it's time to move. And when God says move, get moving. <laughs> you know, it works the same way for us today. Hesitation and needless delay, which can be from fear, hinder the purposes of God. So let's continue reading in verse two. Thou and all this people unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel, every, soul, every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses. Note that this is in past tense. God had already given it to him. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you. Verse five. There shall not any man be able to stand before or against thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Be strong and of a good courage. Now, that's the third time that this is recorded that Joshua's told this. For unto this people, 
Thou shalt divide for an inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and very courageous. There it is one more time. Do you think that God is making a point? (laughs) That thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. Here to meditate is to talk to oneself. Accomplishment is the fruit originating from our thoughts. Joshua was to think about it, to talk to himself about it day and night. Why? Keep reading. That thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. When believers observe and do the word of God that is written to them, they make their ways prosperous and they will always have good success. And here is our spectacular verse nine. Have not I commanded thee, be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed for the Lord thy God is with thee whithersoever thou goest. This is the fifth time recorded in God's word that Joshua is told to be strong and of a good courage or be very courageous. Here, the great man Joshua, who experienced all of those amazing things that we read about and more, still needed this encouragement. And God didn't say, Pray to be strong or pray for courage, did he? No, be strong, be of a good courage. Fear not, right? You see, fear paralyzes. Fear is man's greatest enemy. Fear is believing in reverse and defeats the promises of God. It is impossible to have both fear and positive believing at the same time. Job realized this truth many years before Joshua when he said what is recorded in Job 3.25, for the thing which I greatly feared is come upon me and that which I was afraid is afraid of is come unto me. King Solomon, who was noted for his profound wisdom, said this, which is recorded in Proverbs 29, 25, the fear of man bringeth a snare, but whoso putteth his trust in the Lord shall be safe. What about us today? Well, we are also to live fearlessly. When we are faced with situations when we are tempted to fear, we can take a deep breath And we can be strong and fear not. What worked for Joshua works for each and every one of us today. We remind ourselves of our great God and all the things that he has done for us and his promises to us. We refuse to allow ourselves to fear. Fears, big or small, erode our believing and sabotage our success. And we have something that Joshua did not have. With our gift of Holy Spirit, we can speak in tongues. We can speak in tongues and when we do it is our personal reminder that God is with us and that we have the power that he gave us. When we are faced with fearful situations, Rather than being gripped with fear, we claim the promises of God, we speak in tongues, and we believe for a positive solution. The book of Joshua continues with some astounding records of how they moved forward without fear and vanquished nation after nation of the unbelievers who were in the land that God had promised 
to the children of Israel, the land of Canaan that flowed with milk and honey. As we look at these records of how Joshua lived fearlessly and later went on to fearlessly lead the children of Israel as they took the promised land, we might ask ourselves, how does all of this apply to us? Turn to Ephesians chapter 2. The book of Joshua is not addressed to us in the grace administration, but is written for our learning. And the learning is vast. However, there is a strong parallel between the book of Joshua and the book of Ephesians. The book of Joshua has been called the Ephesians of the Old Testament. And let's look at some noteworthy parallels between these two books. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6. And hath raised us up, referring to God, hath raised us up together and made us sit together where? In heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Our promised land, so to speak, is the heavenly places. In Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3, we, it says, We are blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. That's our spiritual land flowing with milk and honey. Joshua had to claim what had already been given to him, the promised land, which was every place that he would tread. Well, in Ephesians uh, 2, 6, we just read, we have been, past tense, seated in the heavenlies, in heavenly places. Those heavenly places are our Canaan, but we have to decide to claim all of the promises and the spiritual blessings associated with those heavenly places. The children of Israel, they walked in the wilderness for 40 years, 40 years before they were able to enter into the promised land. Let's read Ephesians 2, verse 2. Wherein in time past, ye walked according to the course of this world. The Israelites walked in the wilderness. We walked according to the course of this world. And like Joshua and the children of Israel, they had an enemy. We too have an enemy. Their enemy was a physical enemy. Our enemy is a spiritual enemy. Uh, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12 tells us that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against things like spiritual wickedness in high places. God told Joshua also that no one would be able to stand against him. He wielded God's power. Let's look at Ephesians 1.19. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power God's power to usward who believe according to the working of his mighty power. That's power we can manifest against our spiritual enemy. Joshua and his mighty men battled in Canaan and the equipment that they often used was the sword and physical weaponry. God equipped us also. In Ephesians 6, 11 and following, we are told to put on all of the armor of God, all of the resources, all of the equipment, which includes the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Let's turn to Ephesians chapter six. In Joshua, he was told to be strong and have a good courage. Look what we are told in Ephesians 6, 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And we aren't told to pray about it either, are we? <laughs> God didn't say, you know, pray about it or, you know, if it's God's will that we be strong. No, <laughs> be strong in the Lord. Be strong. <laughs> Let's turn back to Ephesians chapter 2, please. God told Joshua that he would be with him whithersoever he went. 
Today, we have God in Christ in us. God is constantly with us. Ephesians chapter two, verse 18. For through him, Christ Jesus, we both, referring to Judean and Gentiles, have access by one spirit unto the Father. Anyone who believes and becomes born again receives the gift of Holy Spirit and now has access to the Father at all times. So anywhere we go, no matter what we face, we always have direct access. And every time we speak in tongues, we have proof of this very ever-present proof of speaking in tongues. It is our proof of God being there with us because he is closer than our very breath. Of course, there are other parallels between the books of Joshua and Ephesians, and you can have fun finding more of these in your fellowships in the upcoming weeks. We can live fearlessly in every category of our life. Fear is man's greatest enemy. Fear defeats the promises of God. But we can always be strong and have a good courage. We are not afraid, neither are we dismayed. For the Lord our God is with us wherever we go. And we have the exceeding greatness of his power available to us. Like Joshua was to remind himself of his remarkable victories, we too remind ourselves of what God has done for us and all of those great promises that he placed in his word like the ones in Ephesians. And we are mentally strong so we can claim and enjoy the spiritual land flowing with milk and honey of the grace administration. So let's be strong, of a good courage, and be not afraid, and live fearlessly. God bless you.